What's up, y'all? <clears throat> Today we're going to go over tardive dyskinesia. So let's get to it. All right. So tardive dyskinesia, the most common cause of tardive dyskinesia is chronic exposure to central dopamine blocking agents such as neuroleptic therapy. The disorder has been operationally defined to require at least three months onset, although there have been cases that suggest a shorter latency is possible. Stopping the medication can ultimately result in cessation of these movements with the frequency of with the frequency of occurrence somewhere between 25% and 50% of cases. However, the data supporting this estimate is not very strong and there is much controversy about it. <clears throat> it has been estimated that approximately one-third of patients that are treated with dopamine receptor antagonists develop dyskinesia eventually. The strongest risk factors for tardive dyskinesia include advanced age, female gender, and coexistent brain damage. Treatment with typical antipsychotic agents can be associated with the permanent tardive with permanent tardive dyskinesia in these patients. The incidence of tardive dyskinesia appears to have decreased with the use of so-called atypical antipsychotics that do not cause such complete dopamine receptor block blockade. <clears throat> Dopaparadone is an excellent alternative for metoclopramide, but must be obtained from outside the United States. It is a potent dopamine receptor blocking agent, but does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Differentiation from idiopathic dystonia syndromes is sometimes difficult. Dystonia can occur as a focal manifestation around the mouth, as well as in so-called segmental form involving the muscles of the face and neck. However, arching spasms of the back and neck are characteristic of tardive, di tar tardive condition whereas the former disorder responds to anticholinergics or dopamine medications. Anticholinergic medications often make the typical tardive dyskinesia symptoms worse. Tardive dyskinesia is sometimes associated with more appendicular involuntary movements. As such, it can be confused with Huntington's disease. The core of Huntington's disease drifts in the random fashion around the musculature, whereas tardive dyskinesia tends to be more stereotypic. Patients with Huntington disease, however, can have behavioral problems that are treated with neuroleptics, and neuroleptics are, usual treatment, are the usual treatment for chorea, so the two conditions can coexist. Treatment options include benzodiazepines, baclofen, and vitamin E, which are usually only effective in mild cases. Treatment with increased doses of dopamine receptor blocking agents is sometimes undertaken, but most clinicians believe that this results in increased risk of worsening the condition. Medications that deplete dopamine do not seem to cause this disorder, but can, very, can be very beneficial in its treatment. Alpha-methyl P-tyrosine inhibits the catecholamine formation by blocking the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, and respirin depletes catecholamine synaptic vesicles. Although useful, these agents have high incidence of side effects, including orthostatic hypertension, depression, and Parkinsonism. Tetrabenzamine, benazine, another selective depleter of catecholamine vesicles, appears to be more effective with fewer side effects. Botulin toxin injections into the relevant muscles may also be useful. The best treatment is prevention, and care should be and situated to avoid using dopamine receptor blocking agents unless absolutely necessary. All right, now I've got a couple questions for you guys. Which of the following drugs has the highest risk of causing tardive dyskinesia? A. Haloperidol, B. Trihexyphenidyl, C. Levodopa, or D. Diazepam? All right, that's a good answer. You did well. The answer is A. Holoperidol. If you have involuntary movements of the mouth, which one of the following agents results in decreased severity of oral dyskinesia caused by tardive dyskinesia? Would it be A. Flufenazine, B. Trihexyphenidyl, C. Levodopa, or D. Dexedrine? 
It would be A, fluphenazine. Good job. Due to it being a more complete dopamine receptor blocker, it decreases chartered dyskinesia and may be an increased risk factor for long term as well. Though. A 25 year old man that began treatment for schizophrenia one week ago presents to the emergency room for forced, for sustained twisting movements of the neck. Which of the following conditions is likely diagnosis? Would it be A, tardive dyskinesia, B, Huntington's disease, C, acute dystonic reaction caused by dopamine receptor blocking drug, or D, DYT1 dystonia? That's pretty tough, but you got it. It was C, acute dystonic reaction caused by dopamine receptor, receptor blocking drug. All right. Some clinical pearls. The most common cause of tardive dyskinesia is generally the use of chronic dopamine blocking agents such as, such as typical antipsychotic agents. Tardive dyskinesia generally develops months after beginning dopamine receptor blocking drugs and most frequently causes stereotypical movements of the mouth and surrounding lesions. Treatment of tardive dyskinesia is generally less than optimal and so the best course is to avoid development of this disorder by constant reassessment of the need for and the amount of dopamine receptor blocking drugs. Backward arching movements of the neck, sometimes called retrocolis, are believed to strongly suggest tardive dyskinesia as opposed to other causes of dystonia as their ultimate etiology. Dopamine depleting agents such as respirin or tetrabenzene that do not block receptors have not been shown to cause tardive dyskinesia. All right, that wraps it up for tardive dyskinesia. If you got any, uh, need any help or anything, just leave a comment, and I hope this helps you out for the boards. All right, take care. Peace.